Hi everyone, and welcome today to a live streaming on Facebook with Redbreast Single Pot Still Irish Whiskey. Um, myself and Billy are here today to celebrate World Whiskey Day. Um, so we're delighted that you can tune in and um, help celebrate this day. Um, we're going to taste a very special whiskey that uh, unfortunately not everyone uh, watching at home we get to taste, but there are 100 people around the world who have 100 mil samples of this particular whiskey. So they'll at least uh, enjoy the same whiskey that we're trying. But for those of you who don't, if you have a glass of red breast with you, now is a great time to, to try it. Um, for those of you who aren't familiar with our website, please check out uh, redbreastwhiskey.com. And you can sign up to our members, the Birdhouse Members Club, for all the latest news and releases of whiskey um, and expressions as well. Also, if you have any questions in the next, say, 20 minutes while we're doing a tasting, please post them on Facebook or on Twitter, you can use the handle, hashtag, uh, redbreast, um, dream dram. So without further ado, I might pass it over to you, Billy, if you want to take us through this. Thanks, Dave. Yeah. Uh, my name's Billy Lighton, and I am the head blender here at Middleton Distillery. And part of my role is to look after everything that is redbreast. And whenever I say look after everything that is redbreast, it really means the, uh, the quality, the consistency, and of course, very important, the availability to all those red breast fans out there. Um, so that's enough for me. I'm sure everybody wants to get into uh, having a taste of the whiskey. Um, the samples that are out there are unlabeled, so nobody actually knows what's in the bottle, apart from myself and Dave, of course. Um, it's red breast related, so those those of you out there who are Redbreast fans may assume that it is, uh, it's going to be a sherry cask and you would be dead right. We have the actual cask here. I'm going to open it now because Dave and I don't have the 100ml samples. And um, what we have to get the cask. So uh, the blender's dog comes in handy here. And Let's hope there's enough still in the barrel uh, to get us some samples. Oh yeah, sounds good. Oh Dave, you've got a bigger measure than I did. <laughs> um, first of all, just looking at, if you have all poured your, your glass now, first of all, the thing to do is look at the colour. My goodness, look at the, look at the, it's almost a mahogany colour. It's taken on those rich uh, contributors that are coming from the seasoning in, in this, this uh, sherry cask. So, um, without further ado, just let's take a nose. It's an incredible full, I don't know, I'm, I'm getting, what I'm getting is, is big, luscious, uh, juicy fruit, very succulent, um, and that's all coming from the from the sherry cask. So, a little bit more detail about the whiskey. Um, the cask itself, you'll see here, the number is four one two zero seven. The date on it is two thousand and eleven. Now, don't be misled by the two thousand and eleven because this, it's whiskey that was actually recast into this cask in 2011. So it's about six years in this cask. It had, before that, it had 25 years in a uh, refill ex-bourbon cask. So the whiskey that you have in your hand just now is, um, is actually just over 31 years old. Okay? And um, Whenever I was asked to look for this, this dream cask for, for, the, for this event, um, the first place I went to was to where we got the whiskey for the very first Redbreast 21. Uh, we launched Redbreast 21. The first vatting of Redbreast 21 was done on the 20th of August. 2013. Um, and actually, this cask was in the same parcel of casks that were selected 
in the first batting of Redbreast 21. So it is a kind of a sentimental attachment uh, to me. So the nose, back to the nose again, rich, full of fruit, dark fruit, succulent, uh, plums, figs, that's what I'm getting. Now, folks, if, if you're getting other descriptors, please send them in what you find, uh, what you're finding in the nose of the whiskey. And don't forget, it's a single pot still whiskey. Um, single pot still typically has got that spicy character. So what we've got here, what I'm picking up in the aroma is the, uh, the fruit that's coming from the, from the sherry cask and the spices that are characteristic of the, of the single pot still distillate. Um, Billy, as well, you mentioned it's a recasking, meaning it's moved, the contents of the, the spirit itself moved from one cask after a number of years into another. I often get asked, you know, what's the difference between recasking and a finish, for example? Yeah, well, well a finish, um, the Red Breast range is a good place to start and, and look at finishes because we just launched uh, last year the Red Breast Lustau edition, which is a cask finish, which was, which was taking a vatting of whiskey and putting it into, in, in the case of Lustau, um, a Lustau uh, Oloroso sherry cask, uh, Oloroso sherry season cask, um, for a short period of time to pick up those fresher flavours of, um, of the seasoning in the cask. Um, that's, a, that's a finish, that's what I call a finish. Um, the recasking is, is a little bit more than that. Um, it actually is, is part of the maturation. You, you would call it as part, it, it's a more significant part of the, of the maturation of the whiskey. Um, and what, what, why we did that for Redbreast 21 um, was to bring because the Redbreast family is sherry oriented, sherry is the, the key flavour driver in, in the Redbreast range. Um, for Redbreast 21, if you, can, if you could imagine like this whisky had been in this cask for 21 years, it would have taken on a much more um, deep, woody character. Um, which we wanted to avoid for that. So, so the recasking it actually uh, brings a bit of balance to to the flavours that that we want to achieve. So we can recask in sherry casks, we could recask into bourbon casks or, or other types. But it's to it's to influence the characteristics of the the whisky to make them uh, more in line with the character that that we are looking for. Because that ties in nicely here is a question from Greg uh, with great drams because this has moved from bourbon into sherry. So Greg's asking, you know, what is the influence of the ex-bourbon barrel versus the influence of an ex-Olorosa sherry cask? That's a good, good question, Greg. Um, what, we're getting, what we're getting in here, um, there are sweeter notes in here, which will be, when we come to the tasting of it, you, you, you probably pick up the, the lighter, sweeter vanilla notes in there. Now, for me, the first 25 years in the in the ex-bourbon cask is delivering those sweeter vanilla notes. Maybe a little bit of of, of um, charred wood as well. Uh, so you've got what we've what we've done by the recasking is is we've we've combined the the sweeter vanilla, maybe lighter fruit notes. Uh, that we get from the bourbon cask with the heavier, uh, more luscious fruit notes that, that we're going to pick up from the, the, the sherry contribution. Okay, Thanks so that's, try it. yeah, yeah, all we've done uh, so far is, is we've got a, a smell of it. Now, just, just before we taste it, uh, we've got to say it's at cask strength. Um, cask strength, people tend to balk at, at the idea of cast strength. Some people love it. This one, because of the age of it, the cast strength currently, um, and what, what you have in your glass there, is 46.7% ABV. 46.7. Um, 
it, that may seem quite low uh, to be a cast strength, but whenever you consider that it has been losing strength, it started out um, in, in the uh, in the ex bourbon casks at 63.3 percent when it was filled. Uh, on the 31st of October 1985. Uh, so what were you doing Halloween 1985? Um, so 63.3, but 31 years later, over 31 years later, it has, it has been losing strength. The recasking kind of halted that. Whenever it was recast in 2011, um, it was 48.3%. So the first 25 years it went 63.3 uh, down to 48, and it's, it's just gone down now to, to, to 46.7. But they've stopped. <laughs> I want to taste it now, you know. Oh dear, what can I say? Th this, is, this is something very, very, very special. Um, I don't know what anybody else is getting, but the first thing that I'm getting is a big, big burst of, of fruit, that succulent fruit. There's, um, you know, I'm, I'm getting a lot of black currant. Uh, there's, a, there's an orange citrusy kind of marmalade, almost orange marmalade uh, character to it. But then there's, there's some of those, those rich, um, luscious like kiwi, even deepening down to, you know, maybe figs, prunes. Um, And take a note of the, the texture as well in your mouth. Just one sip and, and there's really a full mouth coating. Your tongue is coated, your palate. It's a big, big, big flavour. And it, it lasts, it lasts. And towards the end, towards the end you're getting maybe some of those, those deeper spicy notes. I'm getting a bit of licorice there. Um, yeah, pepper, black pepper, coffee beans, kind of dark roasted coffee, bitter dark chocolate. Rich. Very, very, very rich. Yeah, beautiful. And at the end, it, it, it just goes on. That fruitiness stays there. The black currant, I'm getting the black currant leaves, you know, crushed black currant leaves. Um, beautiful. Um, a very long finish, it, and, and it just asks for another sip. I think it's always good to, to be able to produce some whiskies with a, a cask strength um, and I suppose ABV, you know, it's not every day that there's whiskies out there that are all left at cask strength. So for example, you know, we'd produce a Redbreast 12, which I'm sure you're all very familiar with, which is 40%, but then we also create the exact same recipe according to the same formula and style to create Redbreast 12 cask strength. So that's whatever it was naturally aging in the barrel is now in the bottle, so it's great for people to get a, a sample of whiskey that is kind of as natural as it can be without us kind of reducing it down to a, a bottling strength. So it's always a privilege to be able to try whiskey for us straight from a cask, but there are some whiskies we do produce at a, a cask strength for people to buy as well. I'd really love to hear back from, from people that are maybe picking up other, other flavors there. It's, um, it's, 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 it's a very, very, very complex um, whiskey. Loads of, loads of things going on. Um, and it's all down to the, it's all down to the cask. Um, our master distiller not, <laughs> might not just <laughs> entirely agree with that, but this, this is very much cask driven. Um, speaking about the cask, Billy, you mentioned about the, the year of the recasking, but uh, a question came in about the, the colour. So uh, Jake Mountain just said, nice, nice blue spot on the cast. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, Jake, don't take any other connotations from that, <laughs> except that, uh, that um, designates that this is the first fill 
Uh, first of all, Sherry Cask. So uh, please, nobody read anything into the blue spot on the cask. Um, we have been, again, going back to the whole recasking, because I think it's important for this particular cask. But a question comes in from uh, Dennis Hendricks. How do you determine you know, the right moment to recask a whiskey? Yeah, well, that's a very good question. Um, a lot depends upon um, what, what, what it's going to be used for. If it's, if it's going into to a brand um, like Redbreast, one of the Redbreast, uh, Redbreast range, um, it, it really depends upon, first of all, the profile of the stock that you have to work with in the, in the first place. I mean, sometimes recasking can, can be a, a technique that we use to, to rebalance our, our stocks um, in as much as um, if, if we see a, a, a big demand for, for, for red breast, some of the red breast family, which, which demands a lot of, of sherry cast maturation, um, we can we can adjust the balance of our stocks by taking some. Typically, it would be a, um, a refill, a third fill cask, could be a third fill sherry butt, or, or even a third fill bourbon barrel. Third fill casks really do not contribute an awful lot of um, flavour to the whiskies. They're, they're, they, I would consider them to be um, a, a blending component. Uh, so we can take some of those third fill casks and if we see the forecast tell us that we're going to need uh, some more sherry uh, in, in our inventory, that's the opportunity that we'll take um, to recask uh, into sherry. Now we don't, if, there, if, if we do that type of operation, um, we, we don't consider even looking at it again for some sherry contribution for at least two years. So a recasking will have to be in the cask for us for at least two years to pick up the characteristics that we're looking for. I hope that answers the question and doesn't get too complicated. Um, also, when we're tasting here, we've been trying it at cask strength without uh, adding water. But a question came in from uh, Lorcan O'Brien. You know, should we drink it at cask strength or with a drop of water? Uh, good question, Lorcan. I mean, that, that's, that's really um, a personal taste. Whenever, I would always recommend to people whenever, whenever they're presented with a cask strength whiskey, just because it's cast strength doesn't mean that it's going to need water. So I, I would suggest that you just take a sip of it first of all. And, and you know, especially with this one, take a sip, hold it in your mouth for 10 seconds, and you know your mouth starts to water. And you don't need to add water. For me, you don't need to add water to this one. Um, you, you take care of that automatically. For this one, I mean, but it doesn't really apply to, to every whiskey. Um, sometimes you make it a, a cast, because this is 46.7, it, it's, it's, it's not so bad. Uh, you might get something a little bit, a little bit stronger, yeah. maybe 50 up towards 60%, which will, which will be very, very intense if, if you take it at, at cast strength. But again, I, I, would, I would say, Take a sip first of all and, and decide for yourself if it needs water and how much water you need. Like this, this one here I don't feel needs water. Uh, some people might want to add a little bit of water but for me it would only be a few drops of water. Um, sometimes that, that, can, that can open up the flavours and the aromas of the whiskey. Um, at a higher strength, the, they can be very, very, very intense and maybe not so pleasant for everybody to, to taste. But we find, um, really, with our single pot still whiskies, the style of them is very smooth anyway and, and very approachable. And even changing and now over time when you come back nosing time, it again. Over time, and, that, and that's something, um, that's something I, would, I would say to people, once they have finished what's in their glass, 
don't take the glass away and wash it. Just leave it sitting beside you for the rest of the evening and go back to it every now and then. And the, the aromas that are going to come out of that, you'll be surprised um, how they change over time. I think we're, we're running out of time. So we hope you enjoyed um, joining us for this tasting and hopefully you had a, a drop with you. Uh, if you do have more questions, please keep posting them on Facebook uh, and also with the hashtag on Twitter, uh, Redbreast Dream Cask. Um, so I think we might have one more question before we finish up, um, which I think is a great question, is what is the rest of this whiskey going to be used for? <laughs> From well, uh, um, what William. Is, what is the, who's that? From William. 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 Um, I know you have only 100 mils. Um, we, we have probably got about, um, I would say about 450 litres left in this cask here. And Dave and I are in no hurry home. Um, <laughs> but joking aside, um, we, this cask, I say it was, it was part of our inventory that we had whenever we launched the Redbreast 21. Uh, it's still part of our sherry cask inventory. Uh, we have no immediate plans uh, to use this whiskey for anything in particular. But you know what would be really, really good would be for everybody out there to get onto, uh, onto the feed and persuade our marketing team that this is something we, that we should bottle exclu exclusively uh, for the birdhouse members, something like we did w with the manual love and, uh, for the stillhouse. But um, just, yeah, yeah, do, do that. Put the pressure on. Um, and see what happens. We'll see what happens. All right, so I think from us, um, enjoy the rest of your weekend and uh, International Whiskey Day. So, sláinte. Sláinte.